This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. the ramble yes it's the ramble and it goes from now until midnight yes now until midnight with yours truly alex bennett and uh, we're on the east coast of the united states so uh, whatever time it is where you are uh just adjust and uh, it's about to, oh i don't know five after what is it ten after what is it? it's five after uh ten o'clock on the east coast of the United States of America. And about a half hour from right now, we're going to check in with the Citizens Panel. But right now, we're going to check in with with one of our old friends. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, from San Francisco, California. We used to call it San Frangima. Uh, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, everybody. Hello, Larry was the name of a hey. very unsuccessful television show. <laughs> that was uh, McLean Stevenson. McLean Stevenson, and it was considered to be one of the biggest failures in television in those days. And I think that was after he left MASH, right? Uh, yeah, it was the show he did after he left MASH and, you know, decided that he was going to uh, have his own TV show. And he came up with this thing, Hello, Larry. I can't even remember what it was about. <laughs> was. I don't. Th- was he in radio on that? I, I yes, you're right. He was a ra- he had a radio show, like a morning radio show. And I think it yeah. lasted 13 weeks, and that was it. And in those days, shows yeah, usually, he, he, huh? He loved Mash for that, which was <laughs> that one of the bigger mistakes people had made in the show business. He did leave Mash, show. didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, which was the biggest show on television. Uh, but anyway, it, it, I don't think it, it only lasted like 13 weeks. And in those days, you usually got, well, the 26 weeks before they would decide, hey, we don't want you next year, you know. But yeah. it was that bad that they, so it's one of the well-known <laughs> failures of the time. Uh, well, who are some, what were some of the other great uh, TV failures? I remember... Well, My Mother, the Car, stands out as one of the most famous ones. Uh, With uh, Jerry Van Dyke. Jerry Van Dyke, and the car's voice was played by Ann Sheridan. And supposedly wow. his mother dies and is reincarnated as his car. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'm amazed that anybody was even able to sell that to a network. But in those t- days, you got to remember... You know, you had the Beverly Hillbillies. You had all these shows that were nitwit shows. So Mm -hmm. why My Mother the Car wouldn't work? Plus, I think it was like produced by Danny Thomas or somebody like that and Sheldon Leonard who had like a a good track record. So they probably just walked in and said, we got a new show we want to give you. It's called My Mother the Car. We'll take it. That sounds like a great idea. Boom. Show goes on the air and everybody says, this is the worst thing we've ever seen. Oh, I'll tell you one of the biggest flops of all time. I was, uh, yeah, I get the, I see Mort Saul every Thursday over at Mill Valley, and yeah. uh, he wrote for. Do you know what show that he wrote for that was one of the biggest flops of all time? Nineteen sixty four. Nineteen sixty four. I can't remember Mort Saul writing for a show, but it had to be something that was like uh, maybe a, a, a topical com- comedy show. It was a comedy show slash maybe a little variety. Um, it had a lot of fanfare. It was J- Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis? Wasn't he got it? 30, this is 1964. He got $35 million. Oh, it was the Jerry show. Lewis show, right? Yeah, the Jerry Lewis show. Yeah. Which I think that might have lasted less than My Mother the Car. And more yes. said he never got paid. <laughs> he never got paid? <laughs> no. He worked six weeks on it, never got paid. And but Jerry walked away with thirty five million dollars. I don't know if Jerry got the thirty five million or not. I, I don't know if the contract was I, fulfilled. As I remember though, that show was a complete failure when it went on. Yeah. But Dick then, Cavett was a writer too, I think, on that. Who? Dick Cavett. Dick Cavett. I think though that uh 
they did bring it back in a different form or something. But I don't. Tried, I, they tried to save it, yeah. Yeah, he tried to save it, but uh, it was. You know, one of the biggest failures of all time. Oh, this is a good one. This one, I bet you don't even remember this one. Uh, Jackie Gleason had just come off the honeymooners, and they were looking to do something else with, you know, with Jackie Gleason. So he said, "Well, I'll take the time slot and I'll put a show in there." So they said, "Fine. Here's tons of money. Go do it, right?" And uh, he comes up with a game show called "You're in the Picture." And I can't even remember how I heard of that one. I, I I I don't know exactly. I can't remember exactly how the game was played or what the premise was. But it was something about uh, putting people in pictures of famous things, and you got to figure out what the famous. It. If I can't describe the show to you, you can have an idea of how bad it was as a game <laughs> show. They did one episode, and the next week. Jackie Gleason comes back on, and he's sitting at a table. They've, they've got a tape of this. Go go to YouTube. I bet it's on YouTube. Okay. He's sitting there <laughs> at a table with a cup of coffee, or maybe it was a drink or something. It was a, something he was drinking out of a cup. Uh, and he looks at the audience and basically says, Boy, last week's show was the biggest bomb in the history of television. And wow. I, and I'm coming on this week to apologize to you. And that was that was his uh, his mea culpa on this That's horrible amazing. thing that had been done uh, just uh, a week earlier. Uh, so that was that was a, that was a major failure. I'm trying to think of what other major failures there were. There was a show that was so bad that they ran it on the East Coast and it was canceled before it got to the what, West what, Coast. Was that done by the guys who did Laugh In? Slaughter, yeah, it, 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 Turn On. It was called Turn On. Yeah. I knew a guy who wrote for it. Now, who did I know that wrote for it that told me the story about it? How he came in the next morning after the show was over and you could there could have been tumbleweed going through the offices. Yeah. You know, I wish I could have seen it. <laughs> I I think it made it to the West Coast. It may not have, but it was canceled after the first night. One night, yeah. And these people, again, you know, from people who had a track record, they over at NBC they were doing Laugh In, and you know, if you're ABC, wouldn't you like to have the people who do Laugh In do a show for you? And so sight unseen, they said, go ahead, and they did a show called Turn On. I'm trying to remember who the writer was, though, that I knew that wrote for it. Uh, I think, jeez, I, I can't remember now. But he used to always tell the stories about how how the next day was just it was it was dreadful. You know, nobody called nobody called him to tell him the show had been canceled, <laughs> so he I came to we, work. I'd he like came, to get a we got to get a copy of that one. I think there are copies of Turn On out there somewhere. Uh, but and I met I met Slaughter once. I did some show he was doing on the comedy boom, and he was an interesting guy. He uh, in the fifties he managed Martin and Lewis. Yeah. So he had some he had some great stories. And then he uh, then he produced the first laugh in a fortune. And then I think he produced t- turn in turn turn on turn on. I think yeah I think he did yeah yeah. And uh, it was. Well, wait a minute. Let me let me look here. Here you can. Always, you know, this is a great thing about today. You got IMDb. I used to have a book that had all this stuff, but now you go into IMDb, and you simply put in uh, "turn on," "turn on," and it will tell me nice. everything I wanted to know about. Could turn be on. 19, 1969 or seventy. Well, this is, this is the only titles that I have for "turn on" is two thousand. 18, that's a show. Uh, it's not a show. Turn on, five titles. Uh, wow, it's not here. Uh, we're remembering the name correctly. You know, so I don't know. I can't, I Maybe can't. it wasn't turn. I thought it was turn on, but I could be. Uh, G- George Slaughter. Slaughter. How was it? How was that? S-C... Was it S-C... S-H- S C H A L A T T E R L S C O S C H S C H L A T T. Oh, here we go. George Slaughter. Roland Martin's laughing. But what else did he do? What else did he do? 
filmography. I don't want filmography. I need uh, uh, a producer. Okay. Um, Rona Martin's laughing. Shape of things. Doris, they share. No, it's not here. Maybe he paid somebody oh, to here get off his here resume. It here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, and uh, seasons one and uh, <laughs> episode one. Episodes one. <laughs> <laughs> and it had, uh, let's see here, Teresa Graves, Bonnie Bolin, Hamilton Camp, Tim Conway. Uh, was there anybody? Was Chuck McCann. I think that's the guy who kept telling me the story about it. it was Chuck. He always used to talk about it. Okay. I think it was on a, was it on a Thursday night. Yeah. And let's see here. Full cast. See, see full cast. Okay. Writing credits. Here we go. Maybe... Maybe the writer, series writing credit. Oh, there was just one person. Wow. Ah, it, it, it was, a, it was a, a gigantic failure. One night. And the year, may as well. 69 or 70, right? 69 or 70. Uh, the year was, um, hmm, uh, uh, 1969. Okay. And the and the episode since it's only had one episode was it doesn't say what the date was on it, but the one episode that was it, you know. Uh, I'm trying to think. There was another show that, that that there were a couple of shows that Diane Carroll uh, was a black singer actress, right? And uh, she got a deal with NBC to do the Diane Carroll show. Do you remember that? She, uh, yeah, I think she was 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 she the first she black was the actress first to black, have a show? Black black person to headline a prime time sitcom. Okay? And that thing only lasted a couple of weeks because it didn't work because America wasn't ready for a black lead. <laughs> uh, but it wasn't that it was a bad show. That's the terrible part about it. I wish we could say it was a horrible show, so you know, so what if she was black? But no, it happened to be a very good show. Okay, and um, uh, it failed uh, because of that. Um, and we've had some we've had some failures recently, but I can't remember what they were. They do they do like you know they they come on and they do one episode or two episodes, and then the network just decides we're not going to take a chance on this. The and, candle thing, yeah. Seinfeld never would have made it. Well, well I was going to bring that up. Seinfeld absolutely wouldn't have made it because Seinfeld. Uh, was, uh, in, in fact, it may not have even made it out of the uh, testing rooms because supposedly it had the lowest test scores of any show they had ever run in one of these. They have these, like, preview theaters, and they bring people in, and they give them a, a thing to push when they're, when they're laughing and when they like it and a thing not to push when they don't like it, you know. And then they come out with the score on what people thought of the show. And it was the lowest scoring show in the history of testing. <laughs> well, if you see those early episodes, they're really bad. Well, they weren't bad. They just were trying to find themselves. But somebody mm -hmm. at NBC, to begin with, nobody remembers, the first season of Seinfeld was only six episodes. Yeah. And the second season was only six episodes. It wasn't until they moved it to Thursday nights in the third season that it started to catch on. And by the fourth season, it was a, it was a smash. But it was because somebody at NBC believed in it. And I think that was, Brand, it was Brandon Tartikoff. Believed in it and, and fought for it and fought to keep it on and believed that it could if it, if it got the right time slot. It would work. And what happened is... You know, for those two six uh, night uh, six show uh, program uh, series, uh, they didn't have confidence. I think that's what they don't ha they didn't have. And when they finally got moved to Thursday and they were given a full pickup, they suddenly started, you know, finding themselves and feeling confident about what they were doing. And it, it, you know, as it turned out, it then turned out to be what some people say was the greatest sitcom ever. Mm -hmm. And and certainly ratings wise, a killer for the network, just absolute killer. 
So uh, there's a there's a show that probably today would fail, would absolutely yeah. fail. No no sense of it even even surviving. So and uh, I read also I wasn't a huge fan, but Cheers. I think the first season it was on. I think it may have finished last and out of eighty three out of eighty three shows. Yeah. And, Somebody kept that one alive. Well, those were the days when a network honcho would believe in something and stick with it, you know. Uh, and um, it, it, it uh, you know, it, it worked. It absolutely worked uh, in a lot of these shows. Seinfeld, but Seinfeld needed time. And um, most of these shows needed time. So it, it's, uh, you know, it... it it's a strange business we work in, but I'm trying to think. Were there any other failures you can remember? Major failures? The ones we I'm mentioned. I'm trying to think. I, lo- I love the classic failures. Um, well, it, it, uh, the thing is that what was great about these failures was is that they were monumental. You know, mm-hmm. you do, today it, it, if it, they may be monumental failures, but they're never figured out to be that because they're gone within three weeks, and they're just just shunted to the side plus the reason they went is because they weren't getting ratings and if you don't get ratings nobody's watching then nobody's going to miss it right so there's no big deal out of it but in those days it was like turn on when it went on the network was just going crazy over this thing you know i mean we've got the people who did laugh in now bring you turn on and the show goes on the first night, and there isn't a laugh in the half hour. <laughs> yeah. So was... I got a good failure for you. Okay. The, um, 1992, the Chevy Chase talk show. Oh, yeah, yeah. But that, that lasted, what, about 13 weeks, something like that? Yeah. <laughs> now, that had a lot of fanfare, and now this is going to be huge. How about the Dennis Miller show? And the night- first one, yeah, that didn't uh, last. And that was also ninety two. It was a nightly show, and after I think thirteen weeks, they canceled it. But yeah. The good news for Dennis Miller is he walked away with a walk away fee of twenty million dollars. Really? Yes. Wow. You know, and, and oh, nobody remembers this one. Here, here, here's a here's a failure for you. That was a failure because the talent didn't realize what his talent was. The John Stewart show it was a nightly. Oh, before the Daily Show. Before the Daily Show, nightly show on uh, on uh, 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 syndicated, and I think it only lasted maybe thirteen weeks, and then CBS put uh, Stewart under contract. In case Letterman ever left to do that show, it was the Letterman show. But Letterman never left, and he had the contract for a couple of years and was getting paid really good money not to do anything. And uh, finally, he just let it lapse, and he went over and did the Daily Show, which was a roll of the dice because you're going what you're going over to cable, over to you know hardly watch cable network. And he starts The Daily Show, and it's a huge success. So, you know, from failure comes success. And who uh, and who did he replace on The Daily Show? Uh, he replaced, wait a minute, hold on a second. Uh, I'm trying to remember. It was, uh, oh, God. This is, this is another guy that made a bad decision. <laughs> uh, yeah, but he, and he was supposedly very, very difficult. Was Who was it? Craig Kilborn. Craig Kilborn. Right. Who got his who got his own talk show and then left that and then disappeared. Yeah. Um is uh, Kilborn isn't doing much of anything lately, is he? I never heard of. Him. No, he had that talk show and he wanted more money and he left. they didn't give it to him and they, he got replaced by uh Craig Ferguson. Yeah. Uh and Craig Ferguson was doing well for a while, but then I don't know, he 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 tapped out too. I heard that he was uh, he was steamed that he didn't he thought he was going to get Letterman's show, and that's why he left. Well, I hear stories, okay, about Craig Kilborn. I don't know it's true because everything you hear in show well, is usually wrong. Well, the, to begin with, it, CBS hated him. They hated him because he was a. Uh, um, there's nothing worse than a uh, reformed drunk, <laughs> you know. 
There's a certain <laughs> because all the things that made them an alcoholic still exist, just they're not drinking anymore. They're uh, usually just smoking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he supposedly was they they did not like him because he was very difficult. And at one point, he said, "I want my contract when we uh, for contract renewal. I want more money." Blah blah blah. Okay, fine. Uh, and I want a guarantee that within three years you'll get rid of Letterman and put me in his place. Kind of like the deal that Conan had. Yeah. And, and uh, they said, are you kidding me? We're, we're going to keep Letterman on there as long as he can possibly keep working. He he makes this network a lot of money. You know, uh, well, I'm better than he is, and he's an old guy, and blah, blah, blah. And he was literally <laughs> trying to bully his way into hosting that show. Hmm. And you know he hadn't done that great with his own that he he gave it any it gave them any reason to want to do it, you know. So um, he was a very difficult guy, and uh, they got rid of him and they put in uh, what's his name, um, the James um, Corden. Uh, yeah, you know. Do you realize there are three Jims working late night television? There's Jimmy Kimmel. Fallon? There's uh, Kimmel. Yeah, Kimmel right. and Fallon. Yeah, uh, you, your name has to be Jimmy <laughs> in order to get a late night slot on one of the networks. But, or it's got to start with a J. A J. J. Johnny. Uh, Very important. Yeah, there was late J- night there TV. was Johnny. Yeah, Jay Leno. They're all Jays. Jack Jack Parr. G- uh, yes. Uh, 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 let me see here. Well, uh, Buddy Lester wasn't. Uh, that was. <laughs> do you remember? You don't remember Buddy Lester, do you? I don't remember Buddy Lester. That was the I original remember. late night show on NBC. It was called Broadway Open House, and it starred Jerry Lester, uh, Jerry Lester, uh, not Buddy Jerry Lester, Lester. and uh, Dagmar. Uh, with music by Milton DeLug and his orchestra. And every night they would go on and do the show. And then they stopped doing that, and they got replaced by The Tonight Show with Steve Allen, which mm-hmm. then became a huge success. And then they they didn't know what to do after Steve Allen left, so they put a show on called America Tonight. And uh, Phil Coates, who was a news guy, was one of the hosts of it. And I can't remember who else was a host. And it was kind of like, it wasn't a news show, really, but it was a show with interviews. It was a little more serious than than Alan was doing. And that wasn't working. And they kept uh, um, just, uh, uh, you know, punting for a while until they found Jack Parr. And they put Parr in there. And Parr did a couple of years, not a lot of years, but he did a couple of years and was just a huge success. And then they had to find somebody else, and they found this guy named Johnny Carson. But he couldn't take the job until his contract at ABC was over with. So who replaced uh, who replaced Jack Parr taking over The Tonight Show until Johnny Carson could do it? Merv Griffin. Uh, I, I Merv know Griffin. that. Uh it was Merv Griffin. Okay. God. Yeah. Uh, and, and when he didn't get the job permanently, he just went out off and started his own syndicated show for Westinghouse. So uh, it is, uh, a lot of history. That late night thing was is rife with history. And then, of course, the whole Conan being put in there, getting rid of Johnny, putting in Conan after three months. Dumping Conan and putting Jay back in there or something. You know, it's, it's just it's just a mess. Uh, uh, let me see. Jay got it because he pushed out Carson. His manager got Carson pushed out. And then Jay had it for several years, and then they pushed him out because they wanted this young Conan kid to take over. And he did it for three months after they built him a whole studio and everything out at Universal in California. And then uh, 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 Jay, uh, they wanted Jay back again, so they took Jay and put him back again after having him do a five night a week show at ten o'clock. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember. And the first night it got unbelievable ratings, and then it dropped like ninety percent the next night. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, it was so, unbelievable. And, and and I want to tell you, folks, the reason why you know bubs and i are enjoying talking about failures is being <laughs> something one ourselves 
Uh, we like to know that other people have had worse gaffes than we, <laughs> we don't have. want to be alone. <laughs> you know, we've never seen the big time like that. They no. have, and they failed at it. <laughs> hey, listen, we've run, we've, we've run out of time. How about that? Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it again next week because I love talking with you. You just because your knowledge of stuff is really vast. Mine's only half. I got a little, but not as much as you. That's no, why I like the tab. No. It's like only you would know about this stuff about TV. And well, no, so most of my I'm I I think my reach is half vast. So anyway, hey, thank you. Talk to you next week. Thanks for having me, buddy. I'm going to do some research on turn on now. <laughs> This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk radio like you've never heard it before. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're ready to go. And uh, it's, uh, it's time now for the time when we go to the citizens panel. Let me see here. Let me open up Skype so that people can call me. There we go. It's what you call a self-operated show. Oh, what do you know? Br Brian's calling right off the bat, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Brian. Hello. Yeah, but you're mobile, so we we really can't see you, so I'm not even going to go to the screen yet until somebody calls so we can get a picture from You're calling really early tonight. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I'll figure that later. Oh, I just got out of work, so. Yeah. Longer night than usual. Your phone is a little iffy tonight. It's it's kind of like not sounding decent. It's kind of like crack, cracking up on us or whatever. Let me just uh, tell the audience that uh, last night I was so proud about how this camera looks and that we've gotten it so it's really clear. And then I looked at the playback and it was blurry because this camera has an automatic focus on it, and it kept focusing in and out, so I turned off the automatic focus so it should look great. And tonight I have uh, I have cleaned up the back here, and I you know we I, I moved the uh, on the air sign so you can see it, and uh, then I also lowered the lights here, have a light in front of me so that it's a little moodier and a little nicer. But Brian can't even see that, so anyway. So how you doing, Brian? I'm doing all right. Yeah, yeah. It it uh, 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 the phone is a little on the kind of hinky side. Hmm. Do you think you uh, could wait till you get home to give us a call? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, do that because it, it it's it's not sounding all that good. Okay. Okay. All right. And let's see if we can get some people on who are actually um, uh, are actually um, uh, going to send me some video. Uh, our, uh, if you want to use video, you've got to go with Skype. And you go over to Skype.com, download Skype, and, you know, do what they say, and then call us at GabNet Live. That's our ID. Here now, we do have somebody, and uh, he's, he's, he's raring to go. Let me just uh, bring him up here. There we go. There, there he is. First guy every night, Scott Boddicker. Hi, okay. Scott. Uh, um, when somebody else calls in and I get knocked off, I'll uh, I'll uh, log out and come back. <laughs> Automatically, before you even say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Easy. So, yeah. So uh, what, what's up tonight, Scott? Oh, not much. Not much. Just, just. There was something Another day at the office. There was something I was thinking about Texas yesterday, and now I can't remember what it was that I was going to bring up to you. About, Our crazy governor? Huh? No, no. It had something to do with no? it had something to do with broadcasting, but I can't remember to save my oh. life. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So how's everything in Plano, Texas? Eh, not too bad. Kind of humid today. Kind of southern breezes bringing up the uh, Gulf air and whatnot. We've yet to really have spring. Wow. It, it here we are. What is it? It's the uh, tenth of uh, we're a third of the way now through May, and we really have only had a couple of hot days. Yeah, I think I saw today you were you're around sixty one or so, and maybe maybe fifty nine. Yeah. You know, and uh, th then it's supposed to rain over the weekend. I want you know, and then probably summer will come, and we will just it'll be ghastly hot. You know? <laughs> so. Yeah. Anyway. No, but but. Uh... I just been out working on the yard. I work for about 
two, three hours out in the yard and trying to straighten it up for, you know, still picking up leaves and planting flowers and shit, whatever. Picking up Paint. leaves? What, you didn't do that in the fall? No, 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 no. I, I don't do... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If the leaves... Are these fall leaves from the fall that you did? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is in this is in some areas that are uh, like like in the corners and the edges and whatnot oh, that don't matter much. Okay, because uh, to my way of thinking, you can't. Um, um, well, now here comes Rob, and we lost your picture, Scott. Of course. So click it in again. Hello, Rob. You there? I'm here. Yeah, show us some video, or don't you want to show yourself again tonight? Oh, there we go. He's going to show himself. There he is. Uh, Scott calls right back. You know, this always happens. You, Scott's always the first one to call. And then when somebody else nothing. calls. It, nothing. Nothing. All right. Bye. Yeah. Funny because I see him. You see him? Yeah, I did. I saw him. And then you you weren't seeing him. And then he stopped. He closed his camera again. I don't see him now. Yeah. What? Well, it does matter whether I see him or not because it's what the audience sees. Right, watching Facebook Live, so if yeah. we we don't see him. I mean, we don't have to see him, but you know, it's it's nice. Here we go. Here's Scott Boddicker calling. Now, if Scott will turn on his camera, I bet he pops in very shortly. Here, uh, there we go. See, there he is. It, 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 that's what you get for being early, Scott. But I'm I always quit appreciate doing that. I'm going to be the last one next time. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I now now you freeze every now and then. Yeah, that I see. Yeah, it's it's like yeah, right. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh God, you know. Well, anyway. Uh, anyway, we can still. Hear, oh, when you talk, all of a sudden, you your picture isn't. It's, it's, oh, clearing up. Who who's clearing who, up? I would love to get somebody from Skype here in the studio one night. Yeah. So I can actually grab him fondly by the throat. You got a better <laughs> chance of winning the New York lottery. And 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 saying to him, "Will you please watch what happens with your goddamn fucking program?" You know, mm. but that's never going to happen. Nah. You're you, right. I tried. I tried to contact Skype one time too. When you said you can't contact him, and what happened? You can't find anything nah. on him. Nothing. You would think that somewhere, someone on uh, Facebook or on uh, on the, uh, the on Google would have. Because they work there and know there's a number, put up a number, you know, yeah. and there's no number. You there's cannot nothing. find a number to call. And once I did contact them by chatting with them, but they don't even have that ability anymore. Wow. You know. Uh, they probably got too crazy. Hmm? It's too costly. It's too costly? Yeah. Either that or the guy who was working for them blew his brains out. <laughs> You know, trying to answer all these questions about why doesn't this fucking work and why doesn't that work and why doesn't that work? You know, um, they uh, pretty pretty uh, uh, you know a pretty bad way to run a company. Now it's Microsoft after all. Now can you contact Microsoft? Yeah, you could pay for Microsoft support. I don't know that I don't know that you can pay for support for Skype, but if you call Microsoft, yeah, they'll take your credit card for most support issues. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but it must be a, a, like a, a customer number for for Microsoft. Oh sure, I used to have it because we had a contract with Microsoft. Yeah, so you could call them, and once they engage you, they say, you know, but they only they don't support end users as much as they support enterprise users well so the, the, the phone call was always do, are you standing by to uh to fit to, t to take this to resolution if yeah. not we won't help you meaning we don't care how many hours we don't care if it's you know i've been on calls with microsoft probably your, 12 hours your mouthpiece is rubbing rubbing against something i think you no have, you have a mouthpiece there rob yeah i do but it's in the middle of nowhere oh well it's making some noise there and you weren't, I don't think, Scott, because you use a microphone in your in your computer. What? How about now? Do you hear it now? No, fan, now it's fine. Do you hear my fan in the in the living yeah, room it's, here? It's not me. You know that might I'm be what it is. Up. That might be what it is. Yeah. It's it's the fan. I ha I have a fan here, and if I turn it on full, sometimes it'll, you know, hit the mic and so on. Well, is anybody else going to call tonight? Could be just the two of us, right? 
Three. Great. Three. Three. Well, three. Me included. Oh, I'm a non-person in this <laughs> equation. Um, Is it better? Watch. Yeah. Did you watch any of the uh, coverage today? Did you see the uh, press conference? Uh, Spicer did not uh, did not handle his assistant handled it and Huckabee. Yeah, they, yeah, we still Huckabee. got we still got that rattle. I, I don't know what it is. I don't hear it. Oh, hold on a second. I don't hear anything. Nobody say anything. Oh, it's it yeah, because I, I I mean hold on. No, it's gone now. Huh? Isn't that strange? Oh well. Uh, here comes Charlene. Hello, Charlene. How are you? You don't have, uh, you're on a phone, right? Right. I phone. I'm trying to turn my laptop on and it's working on an update or something. Oh, okay. Well, so I can't use it. Hmm. But, uh, no, Alex, I want to thank you. Like, um, I, I saw that 60 minutes that you talked about yesterday. Yeah. And I was so glad that, uh, I went to Paramus today and I was in the car for a long time listening to the show. Uh -huh. And, you know, I was like going crazy because I, I can't believe like these people now realize that Trump like like well, this who the hell story about a guy, he was going to well, deport. Well, let's get to this in a second because we're on another subject right now. Okay, so let's sorry. take care of that and then we'll get to that because I it's a good subject. Um, but anyway, um, what were you? Somebody was talking about something. Rob, you were. Uh, I was just asking if anybody oh, heard oh anybody the saw the. Uh, uh, yeah. I I didn't, but I did. I did today watch a little bit of news. Just you know, and what I've learned to do is, if I watch the first five minutes and they just tell you what happened, mm -hmm. you're not subject to all those pundits and all the observations. Yeah, you know, and then you can make up your own mind. And I wanted to see what was happening. I did not see the press conference, but I hear that they again were just saying, "Oh, it's nothing wrong. We just decided, uh, you know, Sessions said fire him, so we fired him." Yeah, yeah. Not Sessions, the his his deputy, the the guy that they hired Rod as the Rosenstein. deputy. Rosenstein. Yeah. No, no, no. But but the reason Trump oh, right, fired right. him was because Sessions, who is the head of justice, said get rid of him. Who, by the way, was supposed to recuse himself. Supposedly, recuse, recuse himself from what? From this entire investigation, anything to do with, with the Russian thing and all that, because he conveniently forgot that over the past summer he had two separate meetings with that uh, Russian. Uh, you mean, you the, mean the ambassador yeah. who showed up today at the White House? I believe yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Him. Yeah. And then he, he has the balls. He has the balls to invite that bo that old Russian dude into yeah. the Oval Office, and he invites only Russian media to cover it. Yeah. He doesn't let the American media in. They ha the only pictures they have are from Tess. Son of a bitch. Isn't that unbelievable? What? What, what, what does Trump think he's doing? He's, he's a he's, – he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, Treasonous. He's a tre he's, he's, I'm telling you, he's, him and everybody who impedes this investigation is going to go down for treason at some point. That I know, Sessions, I'm excited. That's, think about this. Any Republican that's involved doesn't want a special prosecutor, but any Republican not involved wants, his, uh, wants special a special prosecutor. prosecutor. Right. So, what does that tell you? The, well, I know this is getting good now. I hope, like, it, you know, it gets going and something happens to him. Yeah. No, well, I mean, but the question is, what can happen to him? You know, I mean, uh, I, I, I do believe it's important that we get the goods on him if they're there. But do you think we can really get him out of office? Yeah, I know. It and doesn't look like it. But. If it doesn't get, if we don't get him, if our system fails, then this country is gone. Right, right. I this feel country the same is. Way, Rob. Well, you know, I was I was watching a documentary in which it talked about the takeover of Germany by Hitler. And one of the first things that he did was impugn the press. Right. And go after the press and, right. and make the Fake press news. completely ineffective. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. um, not that I'm comparing Trump to Hitler. I wouldn't do that to Hitler. Uh, <laughs> you know, but I mean, uh, 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 it, it's just that we it, immediately in the first hundred days, we see the the the. The, the the image of a lot of things that have gone before that weren't good, you know. And this and, is way worse than Watergate. Right. In that Watergate was, you know what? The, the the Republicans wanted a special prosecutor 
when Bill Clinton was staining a blue dress in the Oval Office. <laughs> but now they don't want dress. a special prosecutor. Go figure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why and is this that? Could be a why? treasonous event. Yeah. Why would that be? Why? They were so worried about Bill giving blow, getting blowjobs in the Oval Office that they had to have a special prosecutor. Right. Yeah. That makes no sense. And this, because they're guilty. This we don't have a special prosecutor for. Right. Oh, we don't need one either. Yeah. They're still arguing. Why is that, that, Phil? Will you explain it to us? Can't. Don't know. Uh, I, they may appoint a special prosecutor yeah, eventually. But why, is it that, but why is it they're saying they don't want a special prosecutor? Because they got stuff to hide. Not necessarily. Oh, come on, Phil. Really? If anything, if they have zero to hide, they would they want would a special be, prosecutor. They would open the doors wide and say, come on, bring it. Well, yeah. didn't Trump say that he wanted Flynn to testify? With immunity. No, not with immunity. No. But, no. but, but, but Flynn but, wanted um, immunity. Flynn won't, won't do it without immunity. So, oh, was he going to take the fifth? Huh? What's mm-hmm. he going to take the fifth? Exactly. Hey, sure. So how are they going to appoint a new guy? Or, or or are they still trying to keep Comey in or something? I heard he got like an email that Trump yeah. you know, didn't even fire him in person or something. No, he, got a, he got a regular envelope that was delivered by his former bodyguard. Yeah, he was but Trump didn't Airbnb. say you're fired. But the way he found out he about it was on television. Yeah, but he was in California. Well, that's no excuse. You you tell him first before you tell the press, before you go anywhere right, in front of right. the public uh-huh. and to say it, you, you sit down with him first the and things, you tell him. The things that I read said that Trump was very angry at Comey uh, for yeah, days. Yeah, because he's finding out fire, things. Firing. Well, he may be very mad at Comey, but you still don't fire the guy on television. You know, that that's... He's mixing up his current job with his old job. Yeah. Oh. He's running it like his old job. Yeah, you, you, you don't do it on television. You, you, know, you see him in person or you call him or you deliver him a note or whatever the method is going to be, and then you tell the press. He's the, pr- he's the president of the United States. If he wants to talk to somebody, he'll talk to him. Yeah. Well, maybe he was so pissed at him that uh, this is. I don't care. That's no excuse, Phil. No excuse. Well, he didn't want to give the guy. uh, You know, he didn't want to give the guy. What was he? What was he pissed at him about? He was Uh, pissed at him because he was looking into the Russian situation. He asked for more resources, more more resources to dig. Comey wasn't the uh, uh, wasn't in charge of. There was someone else in the FBI that was doing the Russia investigation. It wasn't Comey. I know well, no, he wasn't me. doing it specifically, but he runs the agency, and he was Definitely. asking for the resources to do more, to get deeper. Yeah, no, he never oh, would. Scary. He would never be involved in, in a particular uh, issue or a particular investigation. Running. He would oversee all the investigations that are going on. That's what his job is. Uh, See, he wanted to have somebody in place that he appointed so that he can control it. And the, the deputy was the one that, that was running that investigation, and he was called into the office this morning. Hmm. <laughs> I hmm. wonder if there will be a fly wall on that one. Yeah. Are you with me, or are you not? And then just after, reeks. After, just after, reeks. afterwards, the ambassador from the Russian ambassador dropped by, along with the guy that he talked to. Remember that Flynn talked to? Yeah, a big smile. Yeah, and they all sat there in the Oval Office. As you say, they they, uh, they didn't allow the American press in for that one. Only the yeah, Russian how, press. Yeah, what did you think of that, Phil? I yeah. thought they uh, just addressed Syria. There was nothing about the Ukraine or anything else. Just they Syria. Had, they had just the Russian press in the Oval Office. This is one of those do. things where they sit down in a chair and he sits down in a chair, yeah. right? And then they take a press. A uh, picture of what's going on, and they they talk to the press a little bit. In that particular situation, in which the press is always involved, mm-hmm. only Russian press were allowed in. And then, Alex, I saw something Weeks. where the American press asked those you know two Russian guys, mm-hmm. and they got mad because they were asking them questions about like, did you tamper with the election? And they just like put their hands up, like, "I'll oh, get get out of here," and then they walked away. Yeah, one of them left. Right. He, they were mad because the American press guys started pushing them on, you know, did you hack the election and all that. Yeah. 
Uh, How would the Russian guys, uh, you know, the news guys, uh, know that whether they hacked the election or not? No, it wasn't well, them. It was the ambassador. I meant the American. No, guys it wasn't the news that. guys. The Americans, uh, I guess, as they were walking out, they must have asked them that, right? Yeah, the American press was asking the the Russians as they were walking out because yeah. they yeah, weren't they in that. Ambassador. They, they walked away. They weren't yeah. in that in that, in that uh, photo op. Yeah. Yeah. So. You just laugh. You, you aren't even beginning speech. to feel a little uncomfortable, Phil. If this no. were, you know, you were worried about. It. You guys made such a big deal about Benghazi. Mm -hmm. This is treason. You're making a big deal. There's nothing here yet. There isn't even any smoke. <laughs> you you know, have the oh. arm of the our our mortal enemy into the Oval Office. Hey, you know. Uh, it was a positive. Uh, look, 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 why, look, why, why does our mortal, mortal enemy get more privilege at the White House than our allies? Well, no, but oh, wait, yeah. wait, wait a minute, uh, Tim. Tim, I have to qu take you to task on that. The fact is that if a person like a, the Russian ambassador or or a Russian official uh, wants to come see the president at the White House, they're always allowed to come. If tomorrow, uh, what's his name from North Korea? Uh, Kim Jong uh, decided that he wanted to uh, come to the White House. He would probably be invited and allowed to come in. So it, it, just because you had the Russians there doesn't mean that that in of itself is treasonous or, or consorting with the enemy. That's you know that's what you do. No, no, it's just bad optics. No, I I agree with you. It's just bad optics. The day that they fire a comey. Yeah, they, uh, I would have I would have canceled that if I were him and said, let's do it another day. Things are too hot in that right. area and we don't, and the optics are bad. You're right. The optics right. is the best term. Right. Very well you, know the, you know the well, other I, reason I, Trump wants to get rid of Comey? He's, he was getting ready to get the tax returns. That's oh, the really? latest. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, and they're saying that there could be Russian implications on the tax returns from where it's. So now they've got to the point of having a reason for that, and they the, the guy that wrote the book about the FBI says seventy five percent of the people at the FBI are angry, that, and then twenty five percent of them are fearful. Look, so you know, they you, they did they fired Comey to say you guys in the FBI were coming after you. Okay, but let me let me let, let me ask you this line. question, Tim. Uh, when yes. when when Comey was going after Hillary, what was your attitude about it? Uh, my attitude, I, I I hated him for the for bringing it out in the public until I found out that he tried to release public information about the Trump Russia investigation, but he was stopped no, no, by no, the no, national. No, 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 no. I'm Pretty asking counsel. you about when he specifically, for instance. Uh, 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 said that he was, uh, you know, investigating Hillary and, the, right. and those emails. Right. And Wait a minute, and 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 it literally was was fucking up her election. Okay, how did you feel about it at the moment? Did you feel I wish they would get rid of Comey? No, I feel that he should have been investigated for violating, uh, you know, the ethics rule. Don't tell me you didn't at the time. Like every red-blooded lefty in America wished that somehow they could get rid of Comey. That Comey had yeah, done a... Absolutely. I, okay. absolutely. Okay, so, uh, yeah. Uh, and the funny part is, one of the things that he, that Trump cited was his handling of Hillary Clinton. Bullshit. <laughs> That's the he one reason that he... how many times? He, huh? He lauded. He lauded, he lauded his, his, his cover. His oh, by speech. the way, he did say Comey was doing a magnificent job when he was running for office. And, this whole, and, today. The, and this whole thing went down with Hillary Clinton. He said, Comey's an honorable man. I love Comey. Comey's terrific. Yeah. You know what else what, stinks? What? What, what stinks? Wait, 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 wait a minute, you, Kevin. What, 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 let Kevin talk, because Kevin doesn't talk what, that much, and I want to hear what he has to say. Did you see? Did you see the letter? I mean, the letter in the in the first end of the first paragraph. Yeah. Distinctly points out that I know you told me three times that I'm not involved in the investigation. Why would you put that on a fucking resignation letter, a termination letter? It just stinks. You know, like Rob was saying, cover up. Yeah. Yeah, but do you think? Do you think he? Hi, 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 Jeff. How are you? Jeff? Good. How are you doing? Good. Uh, just turn on your camera, and we'll be just, yeah. just fine. Yeah, there you go. Um, um, yeah, he. Um, 
I don't think he wrote that letter. Do you oh, think I know he, he did. Do you think he wrote that letter? I don't think so. There's not enough words in it. So who is yeah. who is so Ziggly so if in indeed there. you're putting yeah. in information like you told me you weren't going to blah 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 blah, who in the administration wrote that letter and felt that was important to put in there. Somebody that's, is. That's, that's, some, it sounds like somebody who's as stupid as Trump is. It's a, it's well, a cover. It's, it's a it's a cover my ass. It was State. it was written like a campaign letter, not a government executive letter. Yeah. It was written by a campaign PR person. Yeah. Because something that his people could understand at the rallies, that was written so the people at the rallies could mm-hmm. understand it. It was not legal whatsoever. So let me ask you, because last night when we went on the air, we just found out that Trump had fired Comey. And I said it was going to get stinkier. Do you think it got stinkier today? Yes. Why, Why, Charlene? Well, I I know I saw Chuck Schumer, Mm -hmm. you know, going on and on. Like uh, he was talking, you know, in the Senate and talking about it. And I think it looks bad. It looks like... uh, he well, shouldn't have fired well, him like that because it looks like he knew something and, you know, Trump got rid of him, uh, hoping he's going to go away and whatever he knew or something is going to go away. Yeah, Jeff. I think it's going to stink when the Republicans start talking about it. it and they start. are. And if they're <laughs> not in But <laughs> they're not publicly. T- if, no, anything. they are. I heard one tonight on CNN talking about it. I, I can't. I wish I could remember his name. He's not involved in the government right now. He's not involved in the inner inner circle. It's only those in the, in in uh, uh, his appointees <clears throat> and you know the the majority leaders of the House and the Senate and people in the White House who are not for the uh, the special prosecutor, so to speak. But there that, is some. That's what, that was the beginning of Nixon's downfall when the uh, the majority leader said we're going to get rid of him. Look, as soon as yeah, and and these Republicans who are sticking by him right now will widen the gap and step away when they start to feel the pinch of the of the midterm elections. Right, but they still think they're going to get something out of it, so they're going to stick out. And remember, when Nixon got to this point, it was two or three years into an investigation. It's, it's, well, yeah, and you know, just it's in just the first 120 days. So you know what? But every one of them should should be an accomplice to treason. If it all comes out because well, they held could, up an investigation and this right. nut is in the White House doing things that he shouldn't. He doesn't have the yeah. right to do. Too busy he actually, doing that. This, is, this is grounds for impeachment because <clears throat> it's obstruction of justice. Right. If he's actually being investigated, it's, it's obstruction of justice. You know, now, he's doing all the things Putin wants him to do. That's why he got his little gold star from Lavrov today, because he's destroyed the SCOTUS. He's destroying the media. He's destroying the parks because they were they're going to stop having parks and shut them down. They're destroying the court system. He's having Trump do all Putin's dirty work and ruin us from the inside out. And here we are. We should be d- taking care of sick people, the, the uh, chemical bombings in Syria, and we're fighting among ourselves. And we're not. And why aren't we going after hackers? The people that hack, they're still hacking. We should have a summit of everybody from okay. the. Uh, Silicon Valley well, in the White House. Yeah, but, you, but you, you're, the you're dreaming, Tim. I know I'm dreaming, but that's what <laughs> you're that's, dreaming. You got to be a dreamer. I mean, uh, this is you know, uh, mm-hmm. and and you know what are the what are the realities of this? You I know, I, I say so. yeah, sure, Tony, please. You know, I really like Tim. I think that's his name. It's like it's a great thing to say. Like everybody should rally against him. But personally, if I was working in Silicon Valley and that motherfucker called me up, you know what I'd say? I'd hang the phone up. I don't want to help you because I don't like well, you know, for. there there's something about the president calling you and saying, I need for you. I need some Not help you know. from you or I want you to show up for a meeting or something like that. That makes you kind of say, yeah, I'll show up for it. I mean, if, if I were an executive, I would probably do it, too. I may not like Trump, but it does give me access to him. And they it gives me it when they saved the well, wait a minute, let me finish. Online. Let me finish, Tim. Yeah. It gives yeah, me ahead, access to tell him what I think. Okay. You know, and he's inviting me in, and he's asking for my opinion, and so I'm going to give it. Uh, you know, I just don't like the guy. I don't like his pompous attitude. I think he'd be all nice to your face, and he just wants you to kiss his ass. Well, like on the this. other hand, you might meet Trump and find him to be a perfectly uh, d- fun individual, decent to talk to, and so on on a personal level. Tony. I think he's an actor. You I know, know. Trump, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. Birch's Garden Hitler was great to hang <laughs> with. Tony, yeah. Trump told me he didn't Great like barbecues. you. 
You see? But Alex, I don't... It's his I, I have Alex. a beer with him. <laughs> He'd be all nice. He'd have a beer with him. Well, it's just that he's not qualified to be president. That's all, I'm, all I'm saying, Tim, the, right. point I'm, the point I'm trying to make here is we have to, in all of this, last night I was listening, or maybe it was the night before, to, to Jack and Amy, and they were going about, well, here's what we can do, and then if we put enough pressure here, he'll have to quit, and then uh, Pence will have to quit behind him, and uh, uh, what's his name The you know, uh, at the, at, at the, in Congress is uh, not going to get reelected if things are bad, and then we can, and I'm going... You know, you there are so many planets that have to align yeah. for this mm-hmm. thing to come out the way you want it to. The fact is that you can get rid of Trump. You got Pence. You can get rid of Pence. You get the sec. You know, you get the Speaker of the I'd House. I'd rather have Ryan in there than Pence. Right. Well, I so you want? Oh, you really think you want Ryan in there? It's pretty Jesus. scary. You know, I, I think the Democrats could fight Ryan because. He's at least not, he's at least rational. That's like saying, what do I want more, the bad knee that I have from tearing a meniscus or a boil on my balls? Oh, excuse me, Rob. I didn't mean to bring that up. I heard Uh, somewhere that uh, Ryan, you know, he dreamed his whole life since high school about taking health care away. Really? If that's a little boy, if, if that's a career no, goal, no, he, dreamed of it in co- he dreamed of it in college when he was getting Social Security checks. That's what he dreamed of. It. That's it. Yeah. You guys, <laughs> you guys have have had all of these machinations about. Uh, getting rid of Trump or uh, the Electoral College, protesting this, doing that. You're all desperate, and this is just one more desperate attempt of a bunch of people jumping on uh, where there is It was no like the birther thing. Whatsoever. Remember when hey, Obama hey, was hey, in with the birther thing? We're like the, the birthers last, now, the people that think we can get him out. Right? The, yeah. the last time I, had, I felt this bad is when I didn't vote for Nixon, and we know where that went, and I got the same gut feeling with Trump. I apologize, but my intuition is pretty good usually. Phil, I gotta, I gotta ask you. I mean, how do you respect a guy who, who led the birther movement? Really? Mm-hmm. How do you, how do you respect him? That starts there. That's been going on for years. How do you even respect the guy? This thing All of the stuff that's come along, he because, and he speaks let, and he speaks for himself, Phil. Let he, me, let this me, is not stuff that we heard. Can I answer the question? Well, yeah, go ahead. By okay. the way, we have a full house. By the, the way, the birther movement was no different for Republicans than what you're looking at now is for Democrats. Are you, you, you know, it, it's just it's the shoe was on the other foot. That's right. all. Not even close. Not even well, close. You don't, you don't, it doesn't matter what the severity of one thing is or the other. It's still the same bullshit. You had a bunch of Republicans that didn't want Obama in office, and they were grabbing at straws. Oh, birther, birther. You know, now, you, guys, you guys are doing the exact same thing, but for, you know, but you're grabbing at straws because you're Phil, 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 Phil. Let, let's be honest about something. The birther thing was a fabrication. Okay, so wait a minute, hold on stuff. a second. What this right. is is a very serious question of ethics which is being proposed and the question of whether the Russians meddled in our election. That's All right, wait, wait a minute, let me finish. Question. Let me finish. All right. Yes, it's up for question, but there, is ver- there are very definite signs that there is a very definite possibility. There was never a single sign that Obama... It didn't matter. You know. It didn't matter. It no, was it just doesn't matter. Desperate. No, it's not. It no, no. This is, fake news. Fake news. Fake news. Right? It was the same. All right. Desperate. Let's say for a moment that Barack Obama completely, you know, put one over on the public and that he was from another country and he wasn't born here and he didn't have American citizenship. Even though How, his mother was uh, born he, in Kansas. No, no, but wait a minute. Let's say all of that was true. How does that compare to the fact that you got a president that may have been canoodling with a foreign power? Come on, it's the same because, bullshit. no, no, because it's nobody, the nobody, same nobody bullshit. was going to, nobody was going to get hurt. Nobody was going to get hurt, Phil. Nobody was going to get hurt by the fact that Obama was perhaps not born in this country. But there are a lot of people who are going to get hurt as a result of the Russians literally de facto running this country. 
you're, you're missing the point. The point no, I think is you are, the Bill. subject matter mm -hmm. of the of 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 the vehicle. It doesn't matter. It's the fact that you had a bunch of Republicans that didn't want uh, Obama in office, and they were doing everything. It didn't. Uh, it, just like the they Democrats, did nothing, Phil. Were they hoping, did nothing. They they were hoping beyond hope that each and every one of these things, whether it was when he was grabbing her by the pussy or when uh, any of these things, they were always hoping that they could bring down Trump. Well, that was some Republicans' hope that they could bring down Obama with this birther thing. And, and, and I don't give it any. You're trying credence. to compare. You're trying to compare. You're trying to compare two things that are, a, are in entirely different. To, the point. to begin with, seeing... to begin with, let me tell you this, Phil. The yeah. fact of the matter is that Obama's question of his birth and his birthright was never in. Wait, hold on a second. Don't don't even nod. Uh, well, you know, was was, was, was it was ever in question by the FBI, by the State Department, or anybody else, and that if in fact there was some fire there, it had no relationship to what was going on. You, you know, see, you're, you're you're arguing the the item. I'm arguing the premise I'm behind arguing it. I'm arguing the I, danger Bill. to the American. I'm d d arguing the danger to the American public if this whole thing about the connection with Russia and his complicitness in it is true. Right. And, and I think I do, think I, I if it is, then I welcome President uh, uh, Pence. Uh, you know, but uh, it's got to be proven first. Well, we've Bill, got we've Bill, got that nine-year-old girl he raped on him. You were born well, and like raised it was in this the nine-year-old boy that you oh, you raped. God. Phil, you no, you can't say that to me because I can sue life. you, Phil, because I'm not I'm not in public office. I uh, uh, Pence can't sue me. I can say anything I want to about him because uh, he's in public office. So you know, he can well, also say anything he wants to about get me. Very much from me. <laughs> but here's another question I have to ask, Phil. Yeah. Phil, aren't you a little alarmed that it's not just the Democrats? John McCain wants an independent investigation. John Isn't McCain, he an he's, a Democrat. Yeah. he's a Democrat in Republicans' clothing because he's from Arizona. And if he oh, was a Democrat, he couldn't move the Bill, you are so way too partisan. But this is an American get, thing. He couldn't get a position as dog catcher in Arizona as a Democrat. But he's an honorable man who served his country. And he wants that has to do with the fact that he's in, from Arizona and uh, and he's really not a Republican. He is a well, he's a, but he's a registered Republican. Did he run for the Republican presidency. I'm a registered Republican, but I'm much further. To when the he ran right. for president, oh, who did you vote? Right. For, when he ran for president, who did you vote for? Me? Yeah, I voted for Trump. No, 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 no. I'm talking oh, about when McCain, McCain ran for president. Mm -hmm. I voted for McCain. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, there you go. It, it, case closed. Bingo. Case closed. So I wasn't going to vote for uh, who did he run against? Now I forgot. Uh, he ran against so, Obama. Black guy, Phil, the black guy, Phil, the black guy, you know? Yeah, he yeah. ran against Obama. Yeah, far be it from you to vote for the Negro. Yeah, yeah I, I did not vote for the Negro. No Negroes allowed. I'll you some rugs. <laughs> listen, to, listen to Scott. No Negroes allowed. What? Triple the price. Wait a minute, Scott? No Negroes. He's in Plano. <laughs> no Negroes in Plano. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, well, I'm, more appalled, I'm more appalled by the fact that, you know what, you can say what you want. You, I, 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 okay, fine, you believe this didn't happen. Awesome. It didn't happen. But let the investigation happen. Everybody should just, all the Republicans should be quiet and allow it and, and welcome a special prosecutor and just say, okay, go ahead. You guys want to investigate this? Go ahead and do it. Rob, why, when they appoint a special prosecutor, what are the grounds that they would appoint one? Why, why would Be they have a special? Completely nonpartisan, completely obstruction and of not, justice. Yeah, and, and not someone under the control of the president. It's a so, choice of the Senate, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jeff, so, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Who, so, so the Senate the would decide this. So right. let the Senate decide it. You can also yeah. have a select committee, a select committee. Which you I don't mean, let's put it this way. I, I think Rob, <laughs> Rob, Rob said it earlier. Rob said yeah. it earlier that uh, uh, the fact of the matter was that when, uh, uh, you know, uh, Bill Clinton uh, put some jizz on a woman's dress, they had yeah. a special prosecutor. No, it was because he right. lied to Congress. Oh, please. He lied. It wasn't treasonous. Trump lies all the time. 
It wasn't a treasonous charge, whether whether Trump is guilty or not. And if he's not, then great. But it, it wasn't a treasonous charge. It was he not telling his wife that he was getting blowjobs in the Oval Office. No, he, he uh, on the testimony, he, uh, he made... I did he not have sexual people. relations with well, that woman. That, so that's, 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 that's something that we need a special prosecutor for, because the guy got laid in the but, Oval no, Office. No, he didn't get laid in the Oval Office. He didn't even office. get laid. No, that's the reason he said he didn't uh, have sex he with that woman, sex. Monica yeah. Lewinsky, because it's what do you consider sex? Right. And the fact is that what you consider sex probably, you know, uh, do you guys consider blowjob sex? Yes. Oh, no. Sexual act. My yeah. wife doesn't. Now, you sex. see, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> it's exactly what I'm saying. You ask any woman, uh, <laughs> did, did you have sex with him? No, but I blew him. That's what they will say. They do not consider a blowjob having sex. And, right, and, 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 and most guys, sense. most guys, if they go away and all they did was get blown, they just say, I got blown. They don't say I had sex. Uh, sex only since act. Clinton uh, redefined. It depends on what the meaning of is is. Yeah. <laughs> that's what but, and that was the beginning of ISIS, right? Isn't that odd that that's ISIS? Yes, yeah, yeah. right. That's it's, the meaning it's a Clinton. Clinton started ISIS. It's a conspiracy. Yeah, he started ISIS, and Gore started the Internet. Oh, Gore actually did start the Internet. No. What company did I hear had a product that they were trying to push a few years ago that they called ISIS? Yeah, I saw that uh, on one of the shows. Yeah, I'm trying to remember it's what it was exactly. What? There was a dog on that show you were watching. Well, no, on yeah, there no, there was a a, a dog ISIS. Yeah, on Downton Abbey. Oh, really? Yeah, the dog's name was ISIS, and they killed ISIS off so they could get another dog. <laughs> well, there was another there was another product years ago. Remember the pills called AIDS? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they're yeah. gone now because of AIDS. Oh, of course. Oh. Of course. Well, I, I tell you, I have gotten very little sleep in the last several days, and it's all Alex's fault. Why is that? Uh, I've been addicted to this Breaking Bad. I'm in the fifth <laughs> season. <laughs> yep, you will. Fifth. Well, then I won't even tell you. I won't even tell you about Better Call Saul. Oh, I'm watching. I was watching Better Call Saul. I watched the first season. Uh, I, I'm. I've watched three episodes of the second season, uh, but. I, uh, the Saul character is different than in the Breaking Bad. In Breaking Bad, he was a real sleaze bag. In this, in this one, he, he seems to be a human being. No, he becomes a so sleaze it's his, bag. It's his journey to becoming a sleaze bag. It's a prequel. Oh well, in in the Breaking Bad, he was the sleaze bag. You know, representing well, drugs. Well, he hasn't he's become dead. Saul Goodman yet. Uh, yeah, he's still working. He's about, he's the Saul Goodman he, he, uh, in Breaking Bad. No, I know, but he's about to become Saul Goodman. Oh, okay, and then he'll change. He, 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 yeah, then he becomes the sleaze bag lawyer. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm. I'm I like Breaking. I, I like uh, the uh, uh, Saul uh, thing, but the Breaking Bad. I mean, I, it's addicting. You, I. Uh, you it's, can't turn that off. You get I to the end, and you have I'm to watch it. I'm up till one one thirty in the morning. I gotta. Get, I gotta be at work at eight in the morning, and I'm. You know, uh, I'm, I'm watching. Five, you minutes. know what happened is that when it first <laughs> went on, I watched the first episode, and they said this is too fucking depressing. I'm not going to watch this. And then a few years later, a girlfriend and I were talking about it, and we said, well, let's just watch the first episode again. And we watched it. So, yeah, let's watch another episode. We gave, we'll give it another episode. Before we knew it, uh, t two weeks later in 65 episodes. You're right. You know. What got me was when the kid was riding around on a bicycle in the schoolyard, and they oh. took out somebody. What the hell oh. was that, like the first or second one? Yeah. Yeah. Tonight, and the reason I was late was the uh, kid got shot who was on the a motorbike uh, when they were stealing the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the product that they needed to make the meth from the train. And, uh, uh, and then now uh, the two guys bailed and they want to sell off the product. And uh, so at, at that point, I turned it off uh, to come here. But, uh, I, you know, I, I can't stop watching it. Well, I won't start, start, it starts uh, to die off, and all of a sudden something will come up, and I go, "Oh uh, shit, here we go again." Yeah. Well, anyway, let's <laughs> get back. Let's get back to the politics for a second, then we'll, we can get to Breaking Bad towards the end of the show. But I'm, right. I'm glad I ruined your life. <laughs> That's the appeal of watching Trump. Uh, watching Trump's the same thing. Somebody's not. Somebody's not getting their carpet installed. Uh, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> if my mother was on the line. She would say. Trump's got pimples on his tongue for lying. Who you, who would say that? My mother. Your mother. Yeah, pimples on his tongue, yeah. his tongue for lying. Uh, and you know what? I'd like to see his tongue. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. 
<laughs> Any more than I would like to see his ass. <laughs> yeah. He's got a, probably got pimples on there, too. Yeah. That's probably yeah. true. Uh, uh, Trump would be a gay guy's worst dream, right? Unless you're into those uh, chubbettes. Uh, you know? no, no, he goes beyond the chubby. He goes into uh, really wobbly parts. Uh, <laughs> now, does he have a Kardashian ass? No, he no. He, 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 he's he got an ass that one of the Kardashians could fit in and get lost. So he's got an Oprah ass. No. He, Oprah, Oprah yeah. looks thin by comparison. <laughs> Listen, we've got a morbidly obese president. You're not heavy, you're right. He's it's morbidly so obese. On the, on the golf he's and, like, and, the irony, of course, being that he makes fun of uh, what he perceives to be obese women. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Would he be in yeah. a pre-existing condition? What? Trump, like that being Trump, anything. being Trump in and of itself is a pre-existing condition. <laughs> yeah, being, being hey, hey, shit hey, Alex, I, I got a question for Alex. Please, yes, please. what is your question? Uh, wh who would do better on a psych test, mm -hmm. Reagan or Trump at this point in his career? Reagan, Reagan or Trump on a, on a psych test? Before, before or after test. the well, Alzheimer's? Well, well, yeah, that's Reagan. Reagan. Well, he's halfway there, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think... Well, I think Trump w would because with the Alzheimer's, uh, Reagan was pretty far gone. You know? Yeah, he got confused with uh, reality and fiction at times. But he was still charming. This guy, this yeah, guy, is, and he, and he, he put had, W. Bush he had, was charming. He, he had principles to a certain extent too. <laughs> This well, asshole. Well, oh, God. you know, it, I it have. Gave him, it I, gave him plausible deniability. There for are the several arts. Republicans I found myself saying, I wish we had them back. One of them. Right. One of them was, of course, Bush, second Bush, uh, because he would be preferable over what we have, you know. And uh, then uh, uh, prior to that, I would say uh, uh, Nixon doesn't look as bad anymore. Mm -hmm. Right? Nixon's pretty you know? good. He was an environmentalist. At least you know the law. <clears throat> yeah. Nixon exactly. had quite a few good attributes. Yeah. He, he, he could take but, care of foreign affairs. Wait, wait, wait. Jeff wants to bring up some Nixon good attributes. <laughs> I didn't say I was going to write the list. <laughs> this, I don't have my PowerPoint ready for Nixon, but... <laughs> It'll just take a second. He eliminated but, but I the think draft. he was a crook, but he did have some things that he took to... to he eliminated the draft... <laughs> The third week of June, 1972. And the year I was to be drafted. Uh, that was the week I was to be drafted. Yeah, literally the week, that was yes. The la that was the last printed lottery. Uh, my birthday is June 24th. It was the last printed lottery. That lottery didn't count. I was number 64. Mine oh, was the 15th. Oh, June 15th. Ah. Well, you're a Gemini. Oh, well, gee, then you might have been able to... Uh, you might have been able. What, what prompted him to do that? It was Muhammad Ali involved with that? No, they were. The war was winding down. They were pulling the troops. And out. also, the draft was causing a lot of problems in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, the 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 rallying against that war was predicated mostly by people who were going to be drafted and didn't want to go to this far off land to be used for cannon fodder. Right. Yeah. And it became such a headache for the government so far as prosecuting draft dodgers, so far as all the, all the things that it brought about, that it was better to not have a draft. And so that's it was easier why, to that's, just end the draft. That's why we've never reinstituted it, because, uh, hmm. uh, you know, it was just too much of a problem. It became, yep. too, it became too much of a rallying point for people uh, to... War. To, to go against the war, and that's uh, that. And I, the the amount of sentiment against a war at that time is probably holds a record in this country for any oh, war yeah. we've ever been in. So ending the draft might have been the biggest mistake we made. In a lot of ways, I said I wish there was a draft because then we wouldn't be going to war so often because they'd think twice about you know about the reaction that it was going right. to get. Right. And the, and the cost, not just the financial cost, but the cost in people's so, kids' yeah. lives. Well, there was there was a there was a, there's a lack of uh, discipline that uh, we've lost in this country because we don't have the military to to take uh, eighteen year olds and turn them into uh, adults. You know, uh, you really that's think that's really, you well. really think that's what it took? Yeah, I I think the nope. I think the military uh, grows up a lot of people who who. Just maybe don't do that on their own. Yeah. 
Well, I, I, I think I, it does. I think it's a rather severe way to have to make people right. change. Especially now, you lose your arms and legs. Yeah. Well, in a peacetime uh, economy, in a peacetime uh, army, uh, even with the draft, you're still going. You have them. They're doing things that are positive. You know, they may be building dams and bridges. Uh, you know, there, there's other stuff besides uh, going out and shooting people. What well, was involved in them ending the draft? How did you, how did you do that, Reagan? Was it like uh, uh, no, it was it Nixon. Reagan? It, it was Nixon. Uh, he, oh, Nixon. He, oh, okay. he did it because he knew it was my week. Yeah, and he, 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 he yes, Jeff. I made a major contribution to it, to doing this. Really? You guys are all surprised, but I'm going to tell you this. I worked for, on a B-52, and uh, we put mines on top of the B-52, and we mined the harbor of the North Vietnam people, and they could no longer get food and military equipment into their facilities. And that really scared the shit out of them or slowed them up tremendously. Wow. So, you did this say with, thank you for Jeff. You, uh, thank you, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> thank you for and, So <laughs> wait, let me get this straight. So you were in a beef, you were sta stationed, I guess, in the... No, no, no. Yeah? I work for Boeing. Oh, you work for Boeing. Oh, yeah. And so right. you... And Boeing owned the B-52. They designed and oh, built Oh, okay, but you, so you didn't physically go out and drop these mines. I thought he was a No, no, no. <laughs> I, I built all the devices that allowed yeah. those bombs to be carried on a B-52. Well, you, you know what, what's interesting, though? You know, we think about North Korea and how horrible that is, and it's, it's terrible. The, the North Vietnamese were not terrible. Uh, they just felt they were fighting an enemy. And uh, Ho Chi Minh was studied in the United States. He loved America. Oh. Their constitution's preamble is almost identical to the Americans' uh, preamble. And yet we found ourselves at war with these people. Our mistake was going to war with them. Their mistake was they di couldn't distinguish between us and the Japanese or anybody else that had come at one time or another and tried to take over their country. We were just another one of those invaders. And so it was a war that never had to happen. It could have been taken care of at a peace table, but we just wouldn't. You know, it, it, it wasn't like Ho Chi Minh was this terrible, horrible person who just was bent on world domination. We argued for a year over the shape of the table in Paris. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. A Did whole really? year spent on the shape. Yeah. 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 It, it, but I mean, what was it ultimately a round one? Yeah, but the fact is, and I don't think we ever really got anything done at that table, you know. So, it, it, but I mean, it was a war that was. It was one of these things. Is there was a song once called "We Are We Got Our Feet Stuck in the Big Money and Muddy," and mm. the big fool said mm. to push on. That's right. really right. what happened. Is we got stuck in this quagmire and we didn't know how to get out of it. You know, we just put fifteen <coughs> fifteen thousand uh, advisors in there under under uh, Who Kennedy. Who got us into that, Eisenhower? K Kennedy started it. Okay, two hundred advisors under Kennedy. Was it two hundred advisors? Anyway, it was a small amount. And it just escalated and escalated and escalated. Ex escalated it. Uh, and and so, most uh, of it, you know what? That war was over. It wasn't over oil. It was over rubber. Hmm. It was over rubber. Well, the president yeah. was quite the coxman, so. Yeah, <laughs> right. He needed all the rubbers, oh, rubbers. he could get. I got that no, but, I mean, that was a war that was a totally useless war. So it was worse than the Korean War. The Korean War was... Was an a, a police action. It was a police uh, action, and there was the a, there was a provocation, a military provocate, provo pro uh, provocation, provocation. Uh, but you know it was not what we think of as uh, uh, totally useless, like Vietnam, which was solvable because the party involved was not evil; it, it, they were just not evil people. Uh, and it would, they looked upon us as evil, and, and let's face it, we sent over how many people over to Vietnam? Half a million. And how many were Five. there that already Five. lived there? They were fighting for their land, okay? They were fighting for their sanctity as a country. We were the invaders, and we have to someday come to terms with that and to fully understand yeah. what we did wrong.
Well, we've got the same problem in Afghanistan. Well, we killed 50,000 people in the United States. No, yeah. Americans, I should say. 55, 50, I believe. 50,000 Americans died in that war. Right. But, uh, and look how many people in, in the other countries, mm -hmm. the two other countries that were involved. Yeah, Probably really more of each hey, one. But we've got the same thing that so you, we're You know, maybe, they, maybe in we Afghanistan. killed 200,000 people, maybe a quarter million people. For yeah. nothing. Afghanistan's different, Phil, in that Afghanistan has a, uh, a, a, a government that basically is, I won't say they're on our side exactly, but they're not our enemies. The well, enemies happen to be the Taliban, uh, who, is, uh, who are kind of outsiders in that country. But look at, look at the Soviets when they were fighting the, uh, the Taliban, I believe, uh, in Afghanistan. It bankrupted uh, the Soviets, and there's no way they could win. And for a thousand, you know, for hundreds of years, to begin with, uh, to begin they've with, tried to take over Afghanistan or, or fight in Afghanistan, you, and it's always been a losing proposition. Uh, well, to begin with, you're talking about the, the, the war that... Uh, where we were on the side of Osama bin Laden because it was the Russians against well, them. And well, I, what I, about the guy was it, with was the it Afga what is it? Was it the Afghanistan or was it... Uh, is that 1980? Huh? Was it Afghanistan, yeah. Jeff? Yeah. Yeah, 1980, right? Yeah. Who, uh, hundreds of years ago, who was the guy that had the elephants that tried to Hannibal, go... Hannibal, but that was, okay. that was in Europe. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't go to Afghanistan? No, it was in Europe. Phil. Oh, okay. I, I thought there was, uh, uh, you know, uh, hordes of... Uh, Hannibal Hannibal forged his way through the Alps and stuff. You know, yeah. What's his name? Marco, whatever. Marco Polo. 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 Marco was Polo. the first guy who went there. He, he went the first European the first to go there. European guy. Yeah. yeah. And, then uh, he, then, and, and that's where he learned how to play a, a game in a pool. Well, so yeah. was, uh, but you know, as much as as much as we wanted to support that government and fight the Soviets and so forth, uh, but this has been going on for such a long time, and it has never been winnable. It has never been. Uh, there's no end game in sight. I, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't want to well, see it, 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 terrorists it, get not, a stronghold. It's not winnable because we don't have. It's it's kind of like. Uh, it, it, Syria is not winnable because it, we have no reason to go in there except humanitarian. Right. And that's not as winnable as if you're going in because, you know, they came along and bombed you and now you're going to take care of them. You, you well, know how we won the war in the beginning, don't you? Well, uh, Obama, escal uh, Obama escalated. Uh, no, no, you know how we won it? No, we went no. in and paid off the, the uh, warlords. The CIA no. went in and paid them off, but briefcases full of money and they became on our side for a while yeah until the yeah. money ran out oh is that the reagan era thing that happened uh, with the hostages uh, obama, i think oh i thought no, you not under obama it was under bush it was under Bush. Oh, Bush. Okay. But the Bush yeah. had a very small presence in Afghanistan. It was Obama that in increased nope, our presence. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, but Go I'm on. talking about the first wave when we won the first time. In Gulf there. War. It was real quick. Gulf War? No. Yeah. Uh, not yeah, Afghanistan. But that was, that was Iraq, not, not Afghanistan. No, but Afghanistan, the first time we, we got rid of the Taliban is because we paid off the warlords. But, oh. but you don't mention that Obama uh, actually... No, so Iraq, we, 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 bombed, we bombed the shit out of them. Yeah, but uh, what were you saying, Alex, about Obama? No, what I was saying is Obama actually was the one who started the withdrawal of troops from Afghanistan. He withdrew from Iraq, and he moved more troops into Afghanistan. Now, he eventually began withdrawing, from but he Afghanistan. upped, he, yeah, he upped uh, the, uh, the presence in Afghanistan. Look, our problem in Afghanistan is that the government, who is not our enemy in particular, doesn't want us there, okay? So if they don't want us there, why are we there? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. You know, and, and the question is, uh, you know... Uh, why do we sometimes feel like you know? Why did we go into? Why did we go into Iraq? That was always the question. Well, you know, I mean, yes, you can talk about humanitarian reasons, but if we're not doing it in Syria, we certainly shouldn't have done it in Iraq. How about the more corrupt reason? Wait, 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 Rob. How about the more corrupt reason? It makes money, right? How about the revelation? How about the revelation? I don't understand why Trump is increasing the presence in Afghanistan. 
you know, he, he, he wants, he wants money. donations for his campaign. Mm-hmm. No, from the military industrial complex. No, there, there's got there's a he didn't want to to fight these battles, and and for some reason he has uh, decided that he needed to increase our presence there. I, I think I he just why. did something more today or something. I he escalated something, right? To, I heard it somewhere. Yeah. Read on my phone. Between eighty five hundred and twelve thousand new troops. Or something yeah, like today that. he did that. Yeah, I but I don't I don't know what the reason is for it. You know, hey, you know the other re- other right, reason he met with the. Re- you know why you met oh, with no, the Russians serious. today? What? So quick. Uh, they they have to do redo the the game plan, and they may want Trump to beat up on NATO a little bit more again because they were planning on Le Pen winning in France. Mm-hmm. So that changes the whole uh, uh, Putin's all Putin's plans about putting his empire back together. Le Pen had been behind since the beginning. You know, I know she, but, she they made thought, a good... they, but but they dumped all that stuff off of WikiLeaks, thinking that would turn things at the last moment. Obviously, that, wrong. Stupid as that, that game book worked in the United States. Well, there's work. also one other factor, Tim, that you don't take into consideration. The French have proved they're smarter than we are. But, yeah, <laughs> and they were bragging that they were smarter than us. <laughs> They're always well, maybe they learn from you know, I was I was ready for Le Pen to win that one only because of what went on in the United States and that you know maybe the world was eaten up with the dummies. But apparently the <clears> French, <throat> who I've never had much respect for, turned out to be more uh, more intelligent than we well, are. What they're right. uh, what they're saying is is in the next French election, Le Pen or somebody like her uh, will end up winning. Uh, well, it's possible. Will, he's, got a, it, right? he's got a rough job ahead of him. Macron does. He just got a very yeah. rough job. So uh, this is, uh, I, I think, the uh, the the moderate's last hurrah there. And uh, unless uh, you get all of the um, uh, guys there, the, uh, the refugees. It, it, kind of, it, it really flow. depends on what happens to Trump, Phil, and whether Trump goes down, what, what happens I think in Europe too. Yeah. How how many years uh, does uh, does the president of France have before there's another election? Uh, I think it's maybe something like four years, but you can hold the election any time you want to, oh. uh, because you, you sometimes you want a vote of confidence from the people, and so and then you they say, don't campaign for like five years. <laughs> y- yeah, but that that uh, you know that at a point they have to. Yeah, absolutely. But right. uh, but in the meantime, and most of these, I think I think they can do it in England too. You ask for a vote of confidence. You, you, yeah, because you, you can't run the government anymore. If you yeah. lost. You say I want the elections power. to be held so I can prove to you that the people are on my side. That's actually not a bad idea. No, it's not that. a bad idea. I wish Trump, no, Trump would do it tomorrow. Well, you know, <laughs> and, and talking about England and Brexit, uh, the once they actually pull out of the EU and they see what a damage or no damage uh, occurs and uh, and what the end result is, I think France will be more apt to want to pull out and yeah, uh, go for a more right wing government. Well, I don't, I don't know that it be. I, 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 I don't know that if a Brexit kind of situation means you're right wing. It uh, you know there are just some people who feel that the EU has not lived up to what they thought it was going to live up to. Yeah, and uh, and you but know they there they was don't some fake the news. Mer- there was fake news involved with Brexit too. Uh, that was the beginning. You don't think Putin was involved with that too? Uh, not sure. I mean, it, it's been going on for a while, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm always sure like he pushed 50, it his 50, way. 50. Yeah, he uh, wants the uh, EU broken up. He wants NATO broken up. That's his grand plan. And he knows how to fire at people, and Trump has just learned how to fire people so far. So is Putin like a Stalin? We have to really worry about him? That he's, you know, that's scary? Smarter oh, than he want, he's, power, he's more power hungry than anybody. And he's <laughs> got the money, limited money, but he does have the money personally, because it's a kleptocracy over there anyway. Did you hear that he played hockey today, and he scored six goals? Seven. Who the hell is going to... Seven so, goals. Who's going to block a shot that? He- <laughs> yeah, uh, he get, don't kill it, and now, right? if I'm not There's mistaken, no uh, 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 in, uh, that uh, soccer is a very low-scoring game. Oh, is this hockey? Oh, hockey. Oh. Yeah, is hockey low-scoring? No. Yeah, he, oh, he, he scored seven goals. I mean, who's going to block his shot? Really, you're going to get? Go ahead. He'll yeah, be and he was a goalie. <laughs> <laughs> They all look the same to me. I don't know. They interviewed him today in all of his hockey garb. No, oh, really? Yeah. How many how many people from the opposing team died of poisoning the next day? <laughs> they didn't get near him. 
Yeah. I mean, probably no one because he scored the seven goals. It would be just drastic if we came to find out that all our fears are true. And that, you know, Trump has been one thing he said is I have no dealings in Russia. And then there was a quote by both his sons saying a great majority of our assets are in Russia. Our funding (laughs) comes from Russia. Our funding comes from Russia was one of the quotes. So how 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 Trump can say that he has not he has no business in Russia is ridiculous. It's more lies. And that's why that's why people don't trust him. It'll be on the tax return. Yeah. You, you know who's going to pick for FBI who director? Who? Well, Alex, who's, who's going to be the new FBI director? Uh, I, 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 would say, I would say Scott or, Scott Bayo. No. Oh. You, uh, <laughs> right. some, uh, someone had uh, mentioned, uh, Marjorie had mentioned uh, Christie and uh, and Giuliani. Uh, I, yeah, personally, I'd like to see one of those two be the uh, I'm, sure you would. Would. I'm sure you would because you're gonna, you're, you 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 got to keep up your reputation as a fucking fool. <laughs> <laughs> what I don't understand is how it doesn't scare the crap out of you all this that's going on and why you wouldn't want to get to the bottom of the truth. Yeah. With the, I do want to get to the bottom of the truth. Right. The truth we is all what want I want to get truth. to the bottom. The, so the, the problem, the problem with Giuliani on. becoming the, uh, the uh, uh, director of the FBI <laughs> is that he would, he, he would never, huh? He was AKA a prosecutor. Yeah, big deal. Big deal. Big deal. Uh, it, the fact is the, Trump's pocket. the reason he pulled out when he was supposed to go for, I think, the job sessions has, general. which yeah. is the attorney general, is because if they start asking questions about him, there's a lot of shit. There's well, like, a lot this, of this, illegal, bad stuff. And he doesn't uh-huh. want that to come out publicly. That's so awesome. he pulled himself out. And he's going to pull himself out of this, too, if it ever uh, how about happens. his employee? How about Carrick? Carrick would be good, wouldn't he? Oh God! He's yeah, a felon. I, I, I think he's uh, got an arrest record. <laughs> he's a felon. <laughs> uh, yeah, has he got free room and board or something? I don't know. Three hots in a cot. Wait, uh, well, no, let me put it this way: I know I know somebody who was Car- who was Car- who was Carrick's girlfriend. It's it's gonna be well, it's gonna are, be somebody. Are you, that are you gonna listen to me? Are you gonna mail. listen to me, Tim, and learn something? Yes, I I'm, I, I, I shut up. Yeah. I know knew somebody who had a long term relationship with Carrick, and uh, the question really? I asked her the question directly: uh, Were they corrupt? She, he and and uh, Giuliani, and she said, "Are you kidding me?" <laughs> she said, "They don't even want to fuck with me for all the stuff I know." You know, she's still alive. Oh yeah, she's still alive. That's good. That's and, good. and she also got something like ten million dollars from Rupert Murdoch in a suit. Uh, that, that seems scary. But she said, "You don't even want to know." She said, "They're thick as thieves." She said, "You know, Carrick went to prison. Right. Giuliani didn't, but Carrick pretty much went to prison because Giuliani should have gone with him." Do you still right. have uh, contact with her? And does she know anything about the uh, the Fox scandal? And uh, you know what was what why was would, going on why would Fox? she know anything about the Fox scandal? Because she has of nothing her she has association not, with Rupert Murdoch. Well, no, but that was over a, a publishing business, oh. and oh. and uh, a, a wrongful termination. And she's I love this woman. She's marvelous. She's wonderful. And I if she tells me something, I mean, I, I, I remember we were just walking down the street. We we're going back to her apartment with a bunch of other people. And I kind of sidled over to her and I said, uh, you yeah. know, so, uh, you know, I want one point I asked, why the hell did you ever go out with Bernard Carrick? And her answer to me was, well, you know me, I like power. You know, it's it's uh, so did we just lose somebody? Oh, God. Charlene. Oh, oh, we lost Jeff. Charlene. Charlene. No, Jeff's Charlene, there. Charlene, whatever name. Jeff's here? Wait a minute. Where? Charlene. Oh, there's Jeff. Yeah. She's Charlene. No, Charlene. Yeah, we lost her. Oh, yeah. No, she. I still have her. Well, no, thing. that's Tim. That's Tim. That's, oh, Tim. Tim. that's Tim. But anyway, right. she. I, 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 I won't name her by name, but everybody probably knows who I'm talking about. And she just said that, you know, uh, she said, I just, I was, uh, you know, I was enamored with power. Uh, she said, but uh, after a while, it just became untenable uh, and said that these two were just thick as thieves. They were business partners, and Giuliani was just as corrupt as uh, 
as Carrick was. Just Carrick's the one that wound up going to jail. Dirty cops. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Mr. 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 America, Mayor, America's mayor. Don't you have to be corrupt to do business in Manhattan almost? Yes. Or pay somebody off? Yes. Yeah. Same thing with real estate? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I read that, my that, case. That's why, I, that's why I don't have any uh, ill will against Trump for his business dealings in New York. I'm sure he had to deal with the mob. I'm sure he made did business with the mob because that was the only way he could get a building built in this town. That's what happened to Ferreira, the, the first lady vice president, remember? Yeah, yeah. Her husband was a contractor. Yeah. And all you had to say is he worked in Manhattan. They said, that's it, in the story. Yeah, but I mean, uh, there was, uh, you know, you always had to line some pockets in order to get anything built in this town. So New York City is almost like a third world country at times. Who's when you the just mayor? Higher up the ladder. It's a little, I think it's less corrupt today than it once was. You know? Who was the mayor in 1970 in New York? I, I remember Lindsay well, in Lindsay, 65. Well, I remember Lindsay when I first got here, which Mer was in, when I got, I got beam. here. Mayor Beam. Mayor Beam. Beam. Yeah. Mayor Beam. I remember yeah. I remember interviewing him, and his feet wouldn't touch the floor when he was sitting in a chair. Who? <laughs> a beam. A beam. A beam. Little guy. Yeah. yeah. And 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 the most uh, senile guy uh, I ever interviewed in my life. I said to him, he says, uh, "Shall I put on the earphones?" I said, "No, you don't have to. Not unless we take some calls." Okay. Well, let me know when we're going to take calls. And then he says, so when do I put on the earphones? He kept asking me this 20 times. When do we put on the earphones? I, no, you don't need to put on the earphones. We're not taking calls. Okay, I'll put on the earphones. He was on the oh, man, was he a, was he a trip? I, you know, um, Being there, to remind you of being there almost. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was Chauncey Gardner. Yeah, absolutely. When do I put on the earphones? Your response should have been, when I'm done fucking your mother up the ass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, now that, that would be your talk show, uh, Brian. No compliments, please. I would get his, I would get his attention, and maybe you would shut him up. Too. Yeah, it would shut him up. But uh, uh, and uh, did I ever interview Giuliani? I can't remember. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I would have remembered him spitting in my face while I was talking to him. I, I talked to him twice, just for a few seconds. Uh, he was a very nice guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, because you know everything you want to know about somebody in a couple of seconds. Well. <laughs> Uh, he, he said I, I, he, he said hello to you, and that was nice. No, no, no. He, I, I, I asked him a question, and he spoke in front of our group twice uh, for at least forty-five minutes. What was that? Each. The Hitler Jugend? Uh, <laughs> it was our convention. Uh, he was a keynote speaker. Yeah. Did you? What, did you ask him a question? Yeah, I did. Uh, I, I asked him uh, right after uh, he spoke right after the nine eleven, uh, and uh, the first time. And I asked him why he gave the check back uh, that, that uh, the uh, Saudi prince had given him. And he said it was blood money and he wasn't going to accept it. And uh, there was a, a lot of people in, the, uh, in Congress and Senate that wanted him to accept that money and uh, he wouldn't do it. And, he probably you know, accepted uh, today because he doesn't plan on running for anything. Anyway, I, I guess, guess, guess who's going to run for, uh, let's see here. Uh, in California, in the 26th Congressional District, as a congressman, um, Antonio Zabato Jr. <gasps> he's being my soap opera. General well, Hospital. He used to be he's on my soap opera. He's a horrible actor. He's going to run? Holy shit, it's going to get out of here. You couldn't even fucking remember Is he a Democrat or a Republican? <laughs> he's a Republican. He was well, he's, a, he's a big Trump supporter. He was uh, Jagger, right? He came out... Jack huh? He was Jagger on General Hospital. Yeah, he was so fucking terrible. He was terrible. I, I wouldn't know him if I if he if 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 uh, my um, life depended on it. I, I, he, what district is it down in L.A.? Twenty area? yes, twenty sixth congressional district. Yeah. Zabato is well known as a model and soap opera star, appearing in shows <laughs> including the General the Hospital, The show. Bold and the Beautiful, and Melrose Place. He first became known as a Calvin, Calvin Klein, Klein model. underwear. Boy, <laughs> now we're hitting the bottom of the swamp here. Jeez. In recent years, he's been a regular on reality television, including having his own show, My Antonio, on VH1. These are all great qualities. You know, 
He didn't even have a network show. Was he on The Apprentice, too? Yeah, listen, he Alex, also if we can have Trump, we can yeah. have anybody. <laughs> he also exactly. appeared on the VH1. FBI director. He also, Did you hear who scary. wants to run for president? Well, wait a minute. Let me finish this. He yes. uh, also appeared on the VH1 reality show, But Can They Sing, an ABC competition, Dancing with the Stars, and ooh, ABC's ooh, Celebrity ooh. Wife Swap. Ooh. So uh, he's qualified to be president. Oh, yeah. Or, or at He's least a congressman. Yes. Fire um, Pence and put him in there. Fire Pence and put him in there. <laughs> yeah. Is he in America? I read today that uh, The Rock is interested in being president. Oh, no. Where is where is he politically, though? I don't know where he is politically, but he's saying you do a much better job than Trump. And he was serious. And, and he's not like Schwarzenegger. So, uh, Schwarzenegger can only be governor. He's a citizen. He could be president. Anyway. president. Yeah. yeah. He can't be president. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know that uh, The Rock probably wouldn't be a more intelligent choice than Trump. That's uh, true. Yeah. Yeah. He was a wrestler too. He can body slam Trump. <laughs> Did you see the interesting Trump. headline on uh, Drudge? Uh, oh, under, really under a picture of Trump, it says, Dems dream of impeachment. Uh, pointing in the West Wing and uh, more leaks. So uh, yeah, and and that's yeah, and that's what's happening. You guys just are you know your dream just, just like get. just like the Republicans <laughs> dreamed that they could get rid of Obama because of uh, you know a, a birth issue. Uh, you know, and it's not the birth me- issue. <laughs> it's not the birth issue. It was the dream of getting rid of him. Just like. The dream of impeachment is the dream that you guys are having. Let me let me let me let, let me dream. let me go into my reverie for a moment here. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Reverend uh, Alex. Oh, dreaming uh, of a Trumpless. Uh, I'm not even touching. Right? I'm not even touching myself. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, Rob. Phil, I have an answer for you right there about those dreams. All of those people, the Republicans, Donald Trump has the power to make all those dreams go away. All they need to do is cooperate with this investigation, get it over with, and all of that goes away. Is Trump not cooperating? No. Nope. He fired the FBI <laughs> the director, director the that guy was, was investigating, investigating him. him. And he stopped, he stopped he uh, Yates from testifying. They Yates. tried to stop Yates from testifying before. Come on. Uh, like, they out of the sand they and look up. subpoenaed do- all the documents from Flynn already. Mm-hmm. You know, th- this investigation is moving on. Flynn, Are you Flynn saying is that only, sent- wait a minute, Flynn is only one leg of this whole story. Well, that, that happens Sessions to be met with hacked. the met Sessions, who's your attorney general, and fired Comey. Met with the Russians. Yes, but he met with him in the in the uh, in oh, the, the, while doing his job uh, in in the committee that he was in. Uh, what committee was, was that? Um, uh, the, no, he didn't. This, yes, there's a Senate committee. Uh, I I don't I don't remember which one. I don't know if it was Armed Services or whatever. Wait, but Scott seems to know more about this. Scott seems to know guys. more about this than you do. Wrong. Yeah, wrong. wrong. Well, what committee was he, he, he on? He was on that, that committee for like eight years, okay? And wow. he finally meets with him during the campaign. He never met uh, with anyone before that. He had nothing to do with that. He had nothing to do with this that. job. Uh, That's all bullshit, and you uh, know it, uh, Phil. Uh, oh, you know Scott. it. It's bullshit. No, bullshit. It, it, bullshit. What? Bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of transparency from, from Donald Trump would go a long way. Well, Tax Alex, I got a proposition. Uh, what? Uh-huh. Lester Holt is sick. Can you do his interview tomorrow? His interview with he's who? Supposed to, he's supposed to interview Trump tomorrow. Wouldn't you love to have that interview? You know something? I'm kind of like Holt Ellen. I wouldn't want him on my show. No, yeah. no. A separate interview. And uh, syndicate. I think you'd be great. I think you'd do great. Well, I, I, you know, I think maybe in my day I could have, but I don't think I'm up to the task any longer to do that. Yeah, because you're smart, you know enough, but you're not, you know, obsessed with it like we are out here. You know, I guess, uh, you know, it's kind of like I always wanted to interview Charlie Manson. (laughs) <laughs> uh, and, and and the reason I wanted to interview Charlie Manson is I'd know that in the middle of the interview, Charlie would go a little nutso, right? 
and start talking right. in tongues and do things like that. Wait a minute. And then I want, I, then I want, can I finish, Phil? Yeah, Please, yeah. Please, thank you. Uh, and I always, always wanted to interview Manson just so I could ask him the following, just say the following thing to him. When he'd start going to one of these crazy things, just look at him and say, knock it off, Charlie. We know it's an act. Right. You know, and that's exactly what I would probably want to do with Trump is go knock it off. We know you don't know shit. You know, don't try and 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 con us into all of this. But, you know, if you want to be president, that's fine. Do the that's job. Do, do you go where your heart takes you, not where a but bunch you, of idiots like Bannon and 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 Kushner and the rest of them tell you to go. Do you know how his brother was an alcoholic? Yes. Do you think Trump doesn't drink alcohol? No. Do you think he's drunk with power, though? No, no, that's no, no, no. That, that, that's a silly simile to make. I mean, his his brother was a had a real drinking problem. The family had problems no, no, with. I'm, I'm talking about just the obsessive behavior part. The obsessive behavior. Of, I, 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 I don't know. I don't think necessarily Trump has obsessive behavior. Yeah, because some of the inside leaks are saying that Trump watches this stuff on the news. And when Comey testified the other day mm -hmm. and brought up the whole Trump-Russia thing again and Clapper and Yates, it, he just got furious and was seeing red and right. had to No, something. no, he, there's a difference between that and what you're talking about. The, you okay, know, that could be. You're, 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 what you're yeah. talking about here is a man who is so ego-driven that he can't take criticism. Like, the reason he, he wouldn't go to that uh, 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 correspondence yes. dinner was because he didn't he doesn't like people making fun of him. No, he, can't he can't take it. it. He's a very, he has very thin skin. And so, you know, when Comey said what he said, he probably, that was probably the, fir the first <laughs> nail in the coffin for Comey. You, you, know, you know, the rumor that got out just today, also tonight, was Comey was caught... Uh, off the record saying when Trump came out with the wiretapping thing that Comey talked to associates or friends mm -hmm. and just said Trump is crazy. Just like George Will did in his column with it in the last week. By the way, and whatever that, happened that, with that? that oh, Trump is crazy. We were going to find out in two weeks. Nice. Some interesting things are going to come out in two weeks, says Trump, about that yeah. whole wiretapping thing. Whatever happened with that? Oh, yeah. uh, well, he was having him squash the story when that New York Times story came out, trying to quash the story, and it didn't work because he sent people out. Well, which way? Hold on a second. Which, which, he said that there was which, credibility to the tapping and the uh, and, and the surveillance. No, no not wire tapping. Not it was you know coincidental to normal this this, this stuff. It was not wire tapping him at the Trump Tower. It's so, it, it's kind of like when they do these uh, these wire taps or whatever. They just scatter shot all over the place, and right, some of right. it may have landed in his backyard, but it wasn't that they were going after Trump or they were out to, you know, wiretap Trump. It was the fact that Trump was associated with people they knew were a threat to the country already, and at least his associates were. Now, I heard there's a big story coming out in Manafort tomorrow from NBC, too. There's a lot more deep, deep details in Manafort. That should be interesting. Fake news. Fake news. It's all fake news. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, you know, the subpoenas that went out, Phil, were not congressional subpoenas. They are criminal subpoenas that went out to Flynn. We're, Big difference. Big difference. Well. We uh, may be getting to the I, point I of having enough to uh, make charges. On but my question is, 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 is no, but my question is, 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 uh, is Flynn going to become the scapegoat, basically? Oh, God, and oh, is God. he really the guy we got to go after? Right. Well, some of the experts says that whoever they can flip first and fill in some of the gaps. I don't know. Roger Stone's pretty far out there. If there's He's anything going on, you know, you start with one guy and then you peel the onion to get to the next one and the next one. Yeah, just, they, can't guy, after, they, they won't give Flynn immunity, though, I don't think. They don't no, like, the other guys. I don't want him to give him immunity. I, I want the guy to testify, and if he takes the fifth, uh, then you know, obviously I, I there's something flip, to investigate. Yeah, well, my poster for next week. Unless he conveniently has a heart attack. Or he gets uh, uh, some ricin. Well, there's been eight people in the dossier. We haven't heard from that guy either, from, uh, from M6 or whatever it is. Eight people in that dossier have died mysteriously. 
we better mention that. It's pretty on. exhaustive dossier that they put together on how Russia is trying to, you know, affect Europe and affect America. So, and that's not all against Trump. That's not but, anything new. You no, know, no, but they've been they verified over half of it now, and well, they're probably have the guy come come and testify. We know they're not our friends. Yes, Charlene has oh, her oh, hand up. Charlene has. I just had a question. Did anyone get immunity in Watergate at all? Uh, John Dean, I think. John Dean. John Dean. Someone said he. The other night, someone said he served jail time. Dean. Mm -mm. But yeah. he made it. Oh, so he deal. did get the immunity. He's oh, a, right. He was the squealer, John Dean. Now I remember. No, he wasn't just, the squealer. He was, he was a a few ago. Well, they they made a deal that he would uh, better himself in this if he talked a lot, and he did. John Dean talked a if lot. If I remember, right? John Dean talked because John Dean was upset by the whole thing. Right. And, he and, really and, did, did not like it. Yeah, and that he, he wanted to testify because and turn state's evidence on, on, uh, on the Nixon people because he was upset by what was being done and also the fact that they were trying to use him as a scapegoat. Mm, if, I rem if I remember it all correctly, you know. It's amazing. This the went on how many America. how many years the, ago? Did it this comes go back on? to me after a while, right? The public thought that John Dean was the was the rat, right. and uh, but it turns out, you know, all these years later, we find out it was a disgruntled uh, was an FBI guy that FBI thought he should have promoted. Mark Felt. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, and uh, and on his deathbed, uh, released the information. Deep throat. That was deep throat. Yeah, right? that yeah. was deep throat. deep throat. Yeah, he lived in Petaluma, I think. But does, yeah. doesn't it seem really odd that all the Water, Watergate people are around again? John Dean, Woodward, and Bernstein, and Kissinger with yeah, the they White House. Up Kissinger it's, today. It's, just all like, yeah. it's like a flashback, man. How old is Kissinger? Oh, is he old? old? Very. He's got to be in his late eighties. Maybe yeah. older than that. He, he I think he's ninety. First. He's in yeah. his nineties. I've yeah. seen him though. He's still, you know. He I saw on TV, Commonwealth Club. TV today with uh, with yeah. Trump. Yeah. He's I an saw, expert on coups as well, because he, he he as a CIA operative, he arranged that one. And is it was it Peru or the other or Chile? Can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, Might have been Chile. Yeah. What, what's let's, your question? Let's say this this is let's say some of this is partially true with Russia and the election. Is this bigger than Watergate then for history? Oh, Absolutely. it's going to be bigger. Yeah. Well, I I know the water, you know, Watergate was pretty big, you know. I mean, Watergate what? was big, but it was just a two-bit break-in. It wasn't anything like treasonous. Like it was the cover-up. <laughs> we don't know that there was treason on Trump's part. Now there there may have been uh, uh, yeah. discussion between operatives and Russia, but uh, you know we don't know that it was treasonous. Well, we don't know yet. But all that's, we're all we're saying is this idiot. thing could go further it than could. anybody expects. On the other hand, it could die. You know, and if it dies, it's going to die because the the, the operatives in the government are going to squash it. Yes, Charlene. Well, the, whole, the whole thing with Nixon was he was stupid enough to tape himself, right? Remember, he had all those tapes and everything. It's it, vanished. Well, he, only that Marjorie Woods part or something. You know, what, what I'd like to know right? is, does any president tape himself in the Oval Office anymore? Not after that, I hope. Right? Because they they had microphones all around the Oval Office, so that no matter where anybody sat or whatever, uh, the the mics would pick them up. So he incriminated himself. He, yeah. So the question I have is: Does a president record still record for his own for the record what goes on in the Oval Office? I hope so. Imagine and then Trump they do. Would have, yeah. Huh? Whenever you have a meeting, you want to be able to get a uh, a dialogue of that meeting so that you know what was discussed can be uh, documented. Yeah. Uh, that's, why is, the Russian, that's why the Russian journalists were in there with the meeting today. We did, they didn't trust trust the American uh, journalist. Evidently, maybe there wasn't enough chairs. That's crap. <laughs> this is supposed to be the First Amendment. You know what else is similar between Nixon and Trump? It seemed like at some point he gets a whole bunch of amateur people working around him. In this whole timeline for Fire and Comey, they've had three or four stories going out there. Yeah. And it's, it's just like a bunch of amateurs. Sounds like Benghazi to me. Yeah. Hey, guess what? Do you hear that? It's yeah. our familiar theme song, our closing theme song. Yes, Jeff can hear it. He's <laughs> holding his hand up to his ear. Uh, like we used to do in radio. Remember that, Rob, when you wanted to hear yourself talk? This <laughs> you is mean, the network. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is what you did. That was before earphones. You used your hand. 
<laughs> hey, Rob, thank you so much. How's how's the boil doing? It 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 uh, it blew up last night. I woke up in a puddle of pus. Oh, oh wow. so maybe you so don't you have to have yourself. Ooh. You, you saved save yourself seventy five dollar <laughs> copay. And well, I gotta go to the I gotta go to the urologist on Friday. Okay, well, it's good, but it, but it, it's taking care of itself. It's uh, it is taking care of itself. Uh, okay, your surgery is canceled. Good. I have uh, to cancel that appointment, and I've got to. I went to my doctor today, and she didn't want to do anything about it. She sent me to the urologist. Nice way to finish our program talking about pus. Uh, <laughs> Phil, speaking of pus, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Tim. Thank you. Jeff, always a pleasure. Charlene, it's great. The meds must be working lately because you stay awake through the whole show and you, right. and you have a lot to say, too. <laughs> Scott Boddicker, thank you. Kevin, thank you. Anthony Magno, and of course, Brian, who's got a mouth on him that won't stop. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. To all of you, a good night. Thank you. Wave goodbye, everybody. Okay, there they go. Okay, and I've got to get rid of the uh, Skype people so the next people can use it. I always say that every night. I just should do it and not not mention it. Anyway, that's it for our program tonight. Uh, I, uh, I appreciate your, uh, your participation in watching it. I appreciate the participation of everybody who was on it. And stay tuned next for the... Uh, intersection with jack and amy and that's followed by connections at one o'clock this morning eastern daylight time in the meantime i'm alex bennett and as always if you see her tell her i love her okay bye bye